This is the Andres Segovia Show. Hey everyone, this is Andres, and I'm doing a walkthrough of my favorite tool with which to navigate Twitter. Twitter itself is a tool that I use to basically do a lot of research and stay up to date with a lot of the different news that affect anything that I do in my field of business. But using it on a phone is one thing and using that very same technical interface on a screen this big is a waste of screen real estate. So whether you're on a tablet or you're using it on a computer with a large monitor, it's gonna look like wasted space if you need to go through and curate through a lot of different publications and tweets and feeds. So there is a tool which which you can navigate all this and it's free, it's called TweetDeck. If you never heard of TweetDeck, this was one of the third party apps back in the day that enhanced the user experience for Twitter. So there were a lot of different ones that you probably one of those that use it. I used Carbon, I used TweetDeck, uh, and I did use the Twitter app itself back when it was on BlackBerry. Over time, Twitter did end up buying TweetDeck and they sunsetted the app, but they rolled in the entire TweetDeck experience onto the web, but they don't really advertise it. So unless you know what it is, you probably didn't even realize it existed. TweetDeck is something that you can use columns with. So you can monitor your feeds and they do update automatically. But before I go any further, I want to show you the bottom left says this is TweetDeck preview. That's because I'm using the beta version of this TweetDeck platform. TweetDeck legacy is what you'll probably end up with at the moment because this still needs some polishing, but it's definitely a big step up from the previous interface and I absolutely love it. All right, let's start off with the left side column and I don't mean all the left side here to the panel. I mean the left side column of the first fees that you see. So here you can add, if you have lists, you can add your lists here and adjust them however you want. As you'll see, my first one is home. Home is what you basically pull up when you open Twitter on your phone, on your computer for the first time. These are a couple of lists that I created called YouTubers and the other ones apartment associations because of what I do for business. And I added these headers here and I labeled them myself. I added the members. I made this private. You can make it public if you want. You can always add or take away members to this. And again, you can make it public. Mine are private because they're just for me. And I curate them to however I want. And then there's a hashtag that I follow called rent control. And then my notifications over here. Now, if I have any scheduled tweets, this one's all the way to the right. Now to save on screen space, I love that they turn the messages, which I used to have as a column. Now it's at the bottom, right? Just like it was when you log into Twitter for the first time on the web. So that's easy to do. It's right there. I put it away. I don't have to use up the screen real estate to see messages that I'm not really getting all that often. Now let's go all the way to the left hand panel where you have all the settings and everything that you need to basically sort all this stuff with. As you can see over here, you can tweet. So when you tweet, you'll get all, all the other columns pushed to the side and you can enter information there, upload media, a GIF or a GIF, however you call it, create a poll. Then you have your emojis, you can schedule your tweets from here and of course at a location, choose whether you want this for everyone or just the Twitter circles that you have, uh, and then you could tweet it out. You can do this all from here without having to go anywhere else, which is pretty awesome. You can do your search if you're looking for something, whether it's the hashtag or a user, do that from here. When it comes to columns, that's with respects to these that you see over here, you can add more. I haven't tested the limit of how many I can add, but there is a space to the right that says you can add another column, but I just think it's gonna be overkill if I can't see it and I have to be scrolling to the side anyway, because I'm already scrolling up and down over here. That's a little too much already. On the left side, you can add a deck. So I created a new deck called the Newswire. So if I click over there, it comprises of all these different lists that I created that are suited to me for my research. So I have local news that are LA and Orange County. I have statewide news for California. I, just, I have legislative news to separate it from the statewide news. Then I have the national news, which deals with more cultural, political, and economic stuff, and then international stuff that could affect the markets with which I service. So I do all this research. I added all the members or basically the user accounts that I wanted to follow to make sure that I'm getting the pertinent information, these auto update. And like I said, these are headers up here that you can add for yourself. Otherwise they will look more like this where it hides the header. I like the header because it helps me separate visually uh, which column I'm looking at because you can see this can be overkill. Scrolling up and you can see the header again. And these are headers that you can uh, adjust for yourself. This is how I chose to do it. I added the picture. You can remove the picture. This is the headline. You can add your own description to it, make it private, manage the members, or you can delete it altogether. But you don't have to have it feeds just like this. 
So let me hit add a column so you can see all the different things you can add to this. You can add a home timeline, which is what you open when you first open Twitter. Lists, a search, messages, explore, top articles, profiles. Yes, you can follow a specific profile. That's what matters most to you. Your notifications, your schedule tweets, your draft tweets, and bookmark tweets. So you can have all that as a column. You don't want it, then you can always delete this and then just you know, leave it as is. If you have multiple Twitter accounts, you can go and add the ex the existing Twitter account here so that you can switch from one to another and create whatever decks you want for those, which is pretty awesome. You can add more decks. You can manage the current deck. Uh, you can even change the icon if you still want to, or you can add it as an emoji. But the bottom left is the last thing I'll show you where it has more options. So you can go over and change the display. You can change the width of the columns. You can change the media that the columns show, such as medium, um, a smaller standard. You can change the colors. In my case, I love everything uh, basically in dark mode. So I choose lights out. You can change it to dim or default. So it'll be on your face and then your text size. So you can customize this in so many different ways to your style. So no two tweet decks will ever look alike. And you can do it all for free so check it out today this tweetdeck.com you can go over there or you can just type in tweetdeck on your search bar of choice and you should be able to pull this one up sign in with your twitter and you'll be in and if the interface doesn't look the same as mine that's because you're most likely on tweetdeck legacy it's similar to this might look a little dated either way to each their own thank you so much for watching this one hope it was helpful like share subscribe stay to know and i'll see you on the next one